Hi there, it's Dr. Nadia here, founder of the Doyen Agency and host of Straight Talk About Sales with Dr. Nadia. Today's uh, topic is, can I really make money with live events? One of the things that I've had the opportunity and privilege to do is support a number of entrepreneurs at their live events. Um, and as a matter of fact, this week, I have the privilege of training a group of entrepreneurs on being able to put together their live events and put together their strategy on how to monetize their events. So I was like, you know what, this is a great topic, um, very timely topic, especially as we prepare to round out the year. You may be thinking about continuing a live event, so maybe you did a live event this year, or maybe you've been thinking about adding a live event to your calendar for next year. Either way, live events are great strategies and tools, and it's a great way to not only make money in your business, but also grow your business, um, grow your email list, grow your clientele, launch your mastermind. Like there are a number of different ways that you can leverage live events. Um, but having said that, there are also a lot of work. Um, and if you don't implement the right strategy and do it the right way, it could be very costly, it could be a very costly lesson. So that's a number of reasons, um, what was to say, one of the reasons why a number of times people are a little hesitant to jump out there and host a live event, no matter how much may they, how much they may love um, hosting one or the love the idea of having a live event. So I wanted to share five different things that you really need to do um, as you're pulling together your live event. Now this is the again, this is a short list. This list is not all inclusive, but these are things that I often see that are overlooked. Um, some mistakes that people sometimes will make and you know it'll definitely start to position you and set you up to have success with your live event so the first thing is have a clear offer in other words begin with the end in mind so you can come knew what he was talking about when he talked about that and that applies to a number of things especially your live events I see this a lot when people are having an event and they're all excited. And because there are so many moving pieces when you're pulling a, a, together a live event, it is very easy to forget the whole purpose, right? You just see so many different things going on and it's fun and it's exciting and sometimes it's overwhelming and stressful, uh, when, you know, whatever emotion you might be feeling in that moment. But the most important part is to begin with the end in mind because that will drive the decisions that you will make as you're doing different things for the event, choosing your venue, choosing your city, choosing the dates for your event. You know, all of that plays a big part when you know what your offer is. Um, because that also ties to your audience. You know, who do you need to present this offer to? Meaning who do you need to have in the room with you as you're pulling all of that together? So when you are very clear on what that offer is, what that price point is, which also leads me to point number two, which is being clear on benefits. Not only on the benefits of attending your event, because obviously people wanna know if I'm gonna give up a day, half a day, two, three days out of my life, then I need to know why, right? What am I gonna walk away with? So being really clear on what's in it for your attendees, but also more importantly, when you extend that invitation, understanding how their lives will be different should they continue the journey see that your attendees have already started the journey by showing up at your event right so the next step would be when you extend the invitation for whatever that offer is the continuation of the benefits again that's why it's so important to know what the end game is i.e what your invitation is going to be. Are you inviting them to your year-long mastermind program? Maybe you have an amazing retreat. Maybe you have a shorter program that you are going to invite them to. doesn't matter. You just need to know what it is because then that will dictate, you know, you being clear on those benefits because you'll want people that will benefit from your invitation to be in the room, but then they also need to start getting some of those benefits by coming to the event. So being very clear on what those are, are essential to having a great event, but also a profitable event. And the better that you can articulate them, the better results that you will have. So being really clear 
and being able to say them in a way that your ideal audience, your target market, your avatar, whatever you call them, you know, your attendees will be able to understand. So it's clear, it's like, oh, you want to have that no duh moment, like duh, like I, of course I'm going to go to this event and duh, of course I'm going to take the next step. Like that's how you want it to feel for them, like no brainer, but you have to have massive clarity in order to get that type of response, like super duper crystal clear. The third thing is, and this is a big one, give yourself the gift of time. Give yourself the gift of time. What does that mean, Dr. Nadia? I'm so glad you asked. Give yourself plenty of runway. If this is your first time having this event, I probably wouldn't suggest that you wake up today and try to have an event next week. Like that probably isn't it, right? So you want to give yourself the gift of time. This is really key to having a profitable event when you have an invitation at the end, right? Why? Because you want to make sure you have the right people in the room. And I've seen this time and time again, trust me. When you don't give yourself enough time to get in front of the right people and invite them and bring and build awareness about your event, especially if this is a new event. It's different if you've been at this for a while, right? But if this is a new event or maybe you're pivoting and you're shifting the type of event, especially if you're shifting your audience, you got to give yourself some time. Now, how much time that will vary, that depends on a number of different factors, but you definitely want to take some time to really think that strategy through, even your event strategy in terms of getting people in the room. Because what I've seen is when you don't give yourself enough time and now you're just like, now you hit a, there comes a point of just desperation. And you're just like, oh my gosh, now I am just desperate to not have an empty room. I need people to come to my event. Maybe I need X amount of people to just buy tickets because now I have expenses, like in-person live events, expenses associated with them. Or maybe, you know, I make commitments to my sponsors or whatever that looks like, right? And now I need to get bodies in the room. Well, what happens when you hit that point of desperation to just have bodies and bodies only? Now we have a problem. Because bodies does not equate ideal clients. Those are two very different things. They can be one and the same, but when you hit a point of desperation, you just want people in the room. And those people may not be the ideal people to move to that next step. So you want to give yourself the gift of time to really, one, think through what that looks like. Who needs to be in the room? You know, really being clear on that. Then what's my strategy to get in front of them so that they are aware and build awareness about my event so that you can invite them to the event. But you want to have the right people in the room because that will have an impact on your conversion rates when you extend your invitation. And if you have a room full of amazing people, but they are not ideal, you will either A, not have that many people even convert, or B, you will have people convert, but they won't be your ideal clients. And then you will just work with a bunch of people that you don't want to work with. I don't know which is worse, but those are your, those are your options. So you definitely want to be very clear and you can really, you know, and start to track those types of things too, because just because you have 50 people in a room does not mean you have 50 buyers in the room. That's completely different. Those are two different types of people. So you really need to be clear on that when you're pulling this together. And one of the biggest, best ways to do that is to give yourself the gift of time. Don't rush it. Number four, get support. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I don't know why we try to do all this stuff on our own. I am so guilty of this. I remember my last multi-day event. I didn't have enough support. And you don't wanna be the person that is trying to do registration and then run and do train content for a multi-day event. Like it takes a lot of energy to pour into an audience for multiple days. It takes a lot of energy to pour into people for one day, much less multiple days. And a lot of times you have a multi-day event, two, three, four days, you need to reserve your energy, which means you need support. Find support. What do you need that support most? in terms of managing, you don't want to be dealing with the hotel and having to deal with menu issues. Like those are just not things that you want to deal with in that moment. So even if you just have event support, like get the support that you need, don't be afraid 
of having too much support because I'm telling you, it's a lot. It's a lot of brain power. It's a lot of energy. And again, you're having this event because you have a goal of making revenue at the end of the event. And so you want to be able to delegate a lot of that as much as you possibly can so that you can be fully present and honor that first commitment that, that you made to people when they bought tickets to attend your events because they want to get those benefits and they can't get the best of you if you are depleted because you're running around dealing with all these different things and questions and logistics and hotel and menus and whatever, right? There's just a lot. So get support get support, get good support. And you know, some of that could be volunteer staff. So I'm not saying you go out and you pay or invest a lot of money um, because events can become costly. Those costs can easily add up. And at the same time, I'm not saying not to, like you definitely would want to, you know, see where you might want to, you know, what, what would be a good role for a volunteer and what would be a good role where you, you're like, you know what, maybe I should invest and have someone, a professional come in um, to support me to make sure that because it could definitely protect you so that you don't lose money um, And there are a lot of different ways. I won't get into that in this video I'm um, training, but you know, just you know, there are a lot of ways to make that happen, but I think sometimes we Underestimate the amount of moving pieces that take place even during the event that we don't get enough support There are a lot of moving pieces that happen leading up to the event There are also a lot of moving pieces that happen during the event and making sure that you have the right support that especially supports the client experience that you want for your attendees and your future clients. The, that all of that experience, all that plays a part into whether or not people take you up on your offer. So that's really important. And then number five is have a clear follow up strategy in place. This is another thing I see people, we drop the ball um, sometimes when having an event. There's so much focus on the actual event that we forget that these are people that you know, these are people that we want to continue to build relationship with and continue to nurture that relationship. What does that look like? Not only for your buyers, those that say yes, but also for those that may say no or not now, or they say nothing at all. Like you're just not really sure. You want to have a strategy in place for all of them. And again, you want to think about this strategy before the event. Okay, so you can, a lot of that you can leverage automation and have all of that set up before your event. So, because after the event, you know, you need some time to rest and recuperate and then obviously onboard, you'll need time to onboard your new clients, right? You're gonna get people that say yes and they need to be onboarded and you want them to have a pleasant onboarding experience. So you don't wanna try to expend whatever brain power you have left, trying to figure out, well, how am I gonna deal with people that may have not have said yes or who may be thinking about it or whatever. You wanna think about all of that on the front end so that you can have all of your processes in place, especially your automation prior to your event. So then you can just kick that off at the end of your event. And if there are things that you actually need to do, you'll know what they are and you won't try to have to think about it in that, because you'll have decision fatigue by the time you get to the end of an event, trust me you don't want to have to make any major decisions by that point. So there are definitely strategies that you want to implement beforehand and have all of that ready to rock and roll by the end of your event. So can you make events at uh, money, money at lab events? Absolutely. We, like I said, this year has been a great year. Um, we've supported, I don't know, 15, 16 events. I need to count it up. A lot of events. Um, and they have done great. Um, some have just, we have blown expectations out of the water. Others were like, oh my gosh. Some were like, e lots of lessons learned, right? So, you know, but uh, all in all, they were great events. They were great um, lessons. I don't think anyone would, that would have said, I would never do that. You know, I wouldn't have done it. There are things, obviously, for next year, we're going to do differently or do better. There's always room for improvement. But here are some of the major lessons that I have learned you know, we're working with clients and I've just seen, and I wanted to share that with you, especially if you're looking at implementing a live event strategy moving forward. So even if you've been having an event, you can always, there's always room for improvement. And if you're thinking about adding an event, I encourage you to do it. I think it's one of the best strategies that you can leverage for your business. Um, and when done the right way, it can also be a very profitable strategy as well. All right. So um, this is Dr. Nadia. 
if you have questions um, or you're thinking about an event, click the link below to fill out the uh, form. We have a questionnaire for you about your events. We'd love to talk to you about your upcoming strategy um, in any ways that our team can support you with your event. So click that link, go ahead, fill that form out. You'll then um, receive an email follow-up from our team to schedule time for us to talk about your event and how we can best support you um, in that event. Or if you just have questions about your event strategy, you can head on over to meetwithdrnadia.com and schedule some time for us to chat as well. All right, so this is Dr. Nadia with another episode of Straight Talk About Sales with Dr. Nadia. I am so excited to talk about live events because they are the bomb.com. So again, thank you so much for joining. I am signing off. I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.